This is the Friday, January 2nd, 2015 version of the Market Plus segment. Joining us now is Tom Fitzenmeyer. Tom, welcome back. Thanks, Mike. You know, I, I got completely confused reading 2015 there in that opening line. Uh, but it is 2015. We'll be planting our 2015 crops here shortly in the next couple of months, and they'll be coming out in this fall. And that leads us right into our first question. DW in Tennessee is curious, can beans be $7 by fall? You talked about some of the headwinds affecting old crop. What's new crop look well, like? Like, like? Like I said on the show, you've got a fairly large carry out, carry in coming in from the 2014 crop. You've got potentially a huge South American crop that's going to compete with directly with our their fort facilities have improved the reals dropping um, you've already seen some Chinese demand starting to shift down there um, and then it, and then if you pile a big crop on on top of it next year uh, acreage is probably going to be decent you've got good subsoil moisture um, if, if I think I mentioned the possibility of a 650 million bushel carryout next year. If you have that, uh, there certainly is that kind of downside potential. That's why I think you need to look at some sort of a strategy. You know, if you're not comfortable selling the futures in that 10.30 to 10.50 range and think there's some upside, then then look at buy, buy yourself a 10 or a 10.20 uh, November put. You can buy those for around 70 cents. Um, if you want to cheapen that up a little bit, you can sell a call ten dollars higher, collect twenty cents or so to knock knock some cost off. You, if you want, you can sell a sell a put down below for a dime or twelve cents to knock some more off and get that cost down reasonable. Um, I think you just need to look at some of those sorts of things to to get something locked in here. Or you know, if you don't like any of that, just go make a cash sale on on a few beans. Yeah. Now, as we talk about the bean market with potential downside risk, over on the corn side, are the risks a little bit less on the new crop corn side? I, I, I think the perception is that they will be par partially because the, the perception is we're going to have reduced acres next year. Uh, the corn carryout, I, I think, is a little bit tighter. Um, you could overreact like we did this year and bang it down to 10, you know, 318 to 320 again. Probably more like 350 to 360 is the downside potential for quite a while. I mean, maybe if you get the crop pollinated and the moisture is great and all that, then then maybe you could slam it. I, I I don't see that happening in the next six months or so. I guess. Any any uh, reason to go ahead and make some sales today for next year? Well, I think anytime you can lock in north of four dollars on on cash, I, I I don't I don't I don't see anything wrong with starting there to, just to get a little something sold. You know, we, the other thing people are starting to watch and talk about maybe is hedging some of that December corn just to lock in their insurance price because you know that gets set in February and we, that's that's a time we could be setting a low in and setting a low insurance price. So. Uh, you know, if you could lock that in, so to speak, at a little higher level, and then maybe you just cover it at the end of February and, uh, and figure you'll catch a little weather bounce to do better later on in the spring. Certainly. That's, it, that's one strategy. You bet. You bet. Now, one of the topics we didn't get a chance to discuss on the show was the cotton market. A uh, little bit of a down week this week. What do you see going forward? I think cotton's really in a trading range. It's 63 or so on the on the top side. 58 and a half is a very prominent low on the downside. I think you, if you if you sneak prices up toward that top end, you make some sales. You start creeping down to the lower end. You hold off. Uh, the Chinese are obviously the big the big uh, buyers in that market, and 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 I think they'll keep it well support. That's what's going to keep it well supported at 58 and a half. Um, so I guess that's a strategy I'd have in cotton. Sell the higher of the range and yeah, yeah, exactly. cover it from there. Yep. Now, uh, you mentioned during the show uh, the Brazilian real has been dropping. That highlights one of the, the stories, really, the last three months of this year is the dollar's incredible climb. Do you foresee that continuing? Have we reached a point of stabilization? Where does the dollar go from here? I've been saying that in my newsletter now for several weeks in that I, I just think that interest rate differential is not going to stop. I mean, you, Every financial analyst you look at or talk to or listen to and, and you listen to the Fed meetings, they're, they're, at some point we're going to see an interest rate increase by the Fed. And, and then you look at the, the policy, the monetary policy, uh, the European Central Bank, the Bank of Japan, um, and, and they're all talking about 
some sort of QE in, in a lot of cases, which means probably lower interest rates for them. So that interest rate differential is what drives that dollar. And, and I don't see it. And then you got all the problems in the third world countries, like you say, Brazil, Russia, the ruble. Um, I, I just, it looks like we're on a march higher on the dollar. And I think anybody that is involved with producing commodities that are gonna be exported in the United States probably should have a long dollar position in their account as, as, a, as a partial hedge on that. You bet, you bet. Now, uh, as the dollar's risen, the other big story at the end of 2014 was the tremendous drop in crude oil pricing. And we've got a question here from Tiff from Twitter. She's curious, how low do you see the price of diesel going? And we want to load up now on our farm fuel. Um, I, th I guess I don't know how low it could go. It could, it, there's certainly more downside potential in, in diesel fuel, I think. Um, the, the distillate inventories have been kind of gradually creeping up, which they do in, in the winter because that's what, what, what they refine for. Um, so I, I guess I, I, I don't feel like there's any big hurry to get that done. But certainly with the price drop you've had, uh, I, I think you'd it'd be in your best interest to at least lock some of it up. I'm, I'm, I'm telling the guys I work with at least get half of it covered. And then, you know, maybe you can ease your way into more if we have a continued price drop. It's just, it's too good of a price break to not take advantage of in some way, it seems to me. Now, on the broader picture of crude oil, do you see additional price breaks in the future? Yeah, I think they're going to run it down under 50. I mean, uh, I, Supposedly, it's going to take 40 or so to to push a lot of the producers out. So I think they're going to they're going to at least put the hurt on them for a while, and you're going to have to go into the 40s to do that. Now I don't know that that's sustainable. Probably not. You're probably going to see a bounce because you're going to stimulate demand and and all that. Uh, but I, I think you're in for a period here where. Yeah, you're going to see continued price pressure, and, and there's certainly nothing that happened in the last week or two that would, would give you any encouragement that that's not going to be the case. Okay, all right. Now, and that leads us right to Dave's question. Dave is curious, what's the impact of oil prices on input costs? Should we anticipate a decline in fertilizers and so forth going forward? Well, fertilizer is the only one that would be, well, and fuel, and we just, we just yeah. talked about that, but um, certainly seed isn't going to change much. Um, you know, I... Maybe there'll be some. There probably should be some decline in fertilizer. Whether there will be or not, I, I don't. It's certainly not inflationary for, in, for uh, fertilizer prices. So I, I would have guessed they're going to be more inclined to be lower than higher. Other than that, I don't. I, don't, I mean, chemical costs aren't going to change much because of it. Um, so that would be the only category, and it's probably going to go down at least a little bit. Should go down a lot, but whether it will or not <laughs> is a question. Remains to be seen. Yeah. Now, Tom, before we let you go, as we start 2015, we got a question here from Alex in Iowa on Twitter. He's curious, what's the best investment I can make to start off the new year? What's the rosiest picture as you look forward? Well, I think if you're looking for stability, something that's going to climb nice, slowly, not have a lot of gyrations, it's that, like I said, buying the dollar. That's the one I'd be looking at. Um, the second one, I guess, to me, would be to sell new crop beans on a, on a big rally. Get in there, get them yeah. sold. and uh, Those would be the two things I'd watch the closest. I, I mean, assuming you don't want to talk about equities and that sort of thing, that, that's, that's what I'd look at, I guess. Those are the big stories here for yep. the start of 2015. Yep. Well, Tom, thanks for taking the time to join us okay. tonight. Thanks, Mike. Thanks to all of you for sending in your questions via Facebook and Twitter. Please continue to do so, and we will get expert analysis to you each week. Thanks for watching, and Happy New Year.